iOS 13.2 is here, a massive iOS 13 update. We're going to talk about how it impacts jailbreaking, what the best firmware to be on is, and whether or not your utility will include support for newer devices. Hey, what's up YouTube, it's ICU. And as you gathered from the intro of this video, the title and everything else that's on the internet right now, iOS 13.2 is here. You can now update your devices to it, but should you? We're going to talk about jailbreaking mostly in today's video, but also what iOS 13.2 actually brings to the table. And also today, Apple did announce AirPods Pro that are launching on October 30th, and that's one of the main reasons that we actually have iOS 13.2 today. But don't get me wrong, 13.2 actually introduces a number of other and additional features on top of just AirPods Pro support. So what exactly are those features? We're going to talk about them first, but be sure to stay tuned throughout the duration of this video because we're also going to be delving into, again, exactly whether or not you should update. If we can expect a utility, is it going to be check rain? Is it gonna be something else? We're going to talk about all of that right now now. However, if you happen to miss yesterday's video, I highly, highly recommend watching it because we got a major announcement from the official Check Rain Twitter account. They highlighted three devices, all jailbroken on iOS 13, two of which had Cydia and the other one had Zebra. Of course, Cydia and Zebra are two third-party package managers and installers post jailbreak. They're basically like the graphical user interface that empower the users to actually do things with their jailbreak. So that's awesome news. I highly recommend watching through that because we are going to be referencing that and check rain in today's video. It's linked in your cards now, as well as down below in the description. It's going to be the second link. The first link is actually going to be our jailbreak status checker page for iOS 13. The very second an iOS 13 jailbreak is released, it's going to be announced here first. That's going to be linked down below in the description. Like I said, the very first link. Currently, it says no in red because there is not an iOS 13 jailbreak as of recording this video. But once that changes, not if that changes, once it does, that red no is going to be replaced with a green yes and download links will be posted there first. That's how you're going to know the second a jailbreaks out. It's much, much easier to actually update that page than to push out a video because we have to go through the recording and editing process and watching it back and it's just it's a lot of work you're going to still know the very second a jailbreaks out from the channel but you might just know a little bit faster here on this page so i highly recommend bookmarking it and with that said we're going to talk about ios 13.2 as an update so inside of settings general if it'll load settings general software update once it checks it's talking to apple servers right now it's going to pull back ios 13.2 as you can see here so for the synopsis it says, quote, iOS 13.2 introduces Deep Fusion, an advanced image processing system that uses the A13 Bionic Neural Engine to capture images with dramatically better texture, detail, and reduced noise in lower light on iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max, which I have right here. So the iPhone 11 series gets this feature. No other iPhone does, and no iPad does, and no iPod Touch does, obviously. Or rather, I should say the iPod Touch doesn't. It also says, quote, additional features include updated and additional emoji, announced messages for AirPods, support for AirPods Pro, which I'm just so excited about, by the way, HomeKit secure video, HomeKit enabled routers, and new privacy settings. This update also contains bug fixes and improvements. And when we go ahead and tap on learn more, you can see that there are a additional changes mentioned in the change log. Lots of bugs have been fixed and squashed here in iOS 13.2, but the main takeaway is what we just went over, the synopsis. This is a massive, massive update. I'm not going to go into all of the granular bug fixes and changes. That's really not what this video is. A couple of things I wanted to talk about, however, building on that are the AirPods Pro and new emoji. So we do have this image of AirPods Pro connected and the volume slider. When you actually go inside of Control Center here and you have a connected device, it could appear here. For instance, if we go here and we tap on this little arrow, you can share it to AirPods right there. And once those AirPods Pro are connected, if you go ahead and tap and hold on the volume slider, that's presumably where 
This will live the control for the AirPods on the iPhone side of things. You can do this on the AirPods themselves, but you'll notice that we actually do have new options here to control the noise cancellation. So you have three different modes. You have the ability to enable active noise cancellation. You can turn it off or you can turn on transparency mode, which will feed through the audio that you're hearing or that you would normally be hearing with out the AirPods in your ears through the AirPods themselves. So super cool if you need to hear something going on in your surroundings while still listening to music, podcasts, whatever it happens to be. And then of course, the new emojis. So here they are in all of their glory. I'll let you guys decide whether or not they're worth it. But let's go back to this because there actually is something I wanted to mention inside of settings as well. This is super, super important. We're going to start talking about jailbreaking now and how 13.2 does impact jailbreaking and play a role in jailbreak development. So right here, Apple says, for more information on the security content of Apple software updates, please visit the website and they link to this. So let's go ahead and tap that. It's just going to refresh. I already had it open because I was curious myself. You can see right here that the latest entry they have for iOS is 13.1.3. In fact, I'm going to search for iOS 13.2. You can see here that when you do search for iOS, it will pull up whatever happens to be after it if it is there. I'll show you that in a second. So you can see when we search for iOS 13.1.3, it brings us right to that part on the page, highlights it in yellow, and uh, it comes back with one match, says right there at the bottom. But if we do iOS 13.2, for instance, today's release, it comes back with nothing. There are no results here, no matches on this page. That's because Apple hasn't updated this quite yet. If they do, and if it's something worth reporting, you better believe that I'm going to let you guys know. So be sure to subscribe if you have yet to. But let's talk about iOS 13.1.3 and what it says for the security contents of that release. Remember 13.2's predecessor. It says, quote, this update has no published CVE entries. Now that's super, 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 super important for jailbreaking. For those of you who don't know, CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. We've talked about it a number of times on the channel. In fact, recently too. I'll probably have that video linked down below in the description. Um, but at any rate, let's talk about this. So why is this important and why should you really care? Let's go ahead and search for iOS 12.3. That's really the last one that plays a role here. Uh, so that's 13, or sorry, excuse me, 12.3.2, 12.3.1, 12.3. That's what we want. So when there are CVEs that are corrected in a release, you can see it's a blue hypertext link that actually brings you to a page that says about the security content of whatever iOS version it is. Now, 12.3 is so important because it's actually the reason why we have a 12.2 jailbreak and also a jailbreak for iOS 12.4. See, all of the recent jailbreak utilities that we've had, in fact, all of them for iOS 12, were based on previously disclosed vulnerabilities. I'll talk about that in a second, but first let's go ahead and scroll down to exactly what we're referring to here. Okay, right there. Here, you can see multiple kernel vulnerabilities are corrected in iOS 12.3. Credited, of course, to several sources, uh, including Brandon Azad of Google Project Zero, uh, which is very important because Google Project Zero has been responsible for discovering a number of kernel vulnerabilities that in turn have led to new jailbreaks. But how is this relevant now? Well, let me take you guys back to when iOS 12.3 dropped. As a direct result of 12.3, we got an update to the uncovered jailbreak for iOS 12.2. We were then able to jailbreak 12.2, which was previously unjailbreakable because this was disclosed. So we have iOS 12.2, unjailbreakable. Then Apple drops iOS 12.3 right? Which closes these three kernel vulnerabilities right here, okay? And that in turn allowed developers, 
primarily pwn to own to actually use that vulnerability, exploit it, and roll it into Uncover to be able to jailbreak. And this, of course, is also what led to an iOS 12.4 jailbreak, because although Apple did patch these vulnerabilities in iOS 12.3, for some weird and miraculous reason, they actually didn't include the patches in iOS 12.4. So yes, even the 12.4 jailbreak was also based on previously disclosed vulnerabilities. This is how we get jailbreaks guys. Checkrain is something new. It was something unexpected. We had no clue the Checkmate exploit, which is what Checkrain will be based on, was actually going to be a thing. I thought exploits like Checkmate were dead. I didn't think it was going to be possible after we had the Lime Rain exploit, which was the last of its kind, the last public boot ROM exploit, which as some of you or many of you who have been watching this series already know, boot ROM exploits simply cannot be patched by Apple. The only way they can patch it is to release new devices, which they've done with the A12 because Checkmate only includes support for A11 and lower, the iPhone 10 and lower, and the iPhone 8 and lower. Lower, and of course, doesn't support the iPhone XS series or the new iPhone 11 series because Apple has already rolled that patch into the processors and into the silicon used in said processors on those iPhones. So this is how we get jailbreaks. It's really very, very critical that we receive new CVEs, specifically kernel vulnerabilities that have been patched in iOS 13. We don't know whether or not that's the case now with iOS 13.2, but judging by the fact that 13.2 has been out for about 40 minutes now, and Apple still hasn't updated this page, I think it might be safe to say that it doesn't include any new kernel fixes here, which is unfortunate. However, that means I can give you guys a definitive answer as to whether or not you should update based on whichever firmware you're on. The answer is no. No, do not update right now. See, if this said that we had new kernel vulnerabilities patched in iOS 13.2, I would recommend updating to iOS 13.1.3 before Apple closes the window. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Of course, I will release an amendment to this video if, in fact, after posting it, Apple does actually post security changes in iOS 13.2 that could, in theory, lead to the creation of a jailbreak for all devices, not just the iPhone 10 A11 CPU and lower, but also A12 and A13. So definitely keep that in mind. Like I said, subscribe if you have yet to. But as for now, the best policy is to stay on whichever firmware you're on. Stay as low as you possibly can. Do not update. Do not update, guys. If you have something like an A12 powered iPhone XS Max here or the A13 powered iPhone 11 Pro Max on your left here. Do not update. However, if you have something like an A11 powered iPhone 10, 8 or lower, then the choice is really up to you. It just depends on whether or not you want to live with the caveats that may be introduced or rather actually will be introduced by Checkrain because Checkrain is going to be a tethered jailbreak with limited device support. Remember, you're only getting support for older devices here and it's going to be tethered, which means that anytime you want to essentially reboot your device, so you can see right here, anytime you want to reboot your device, you're going to have to plug it into your computer if you want to use your jailbreak stuff, so to speak. Now, it could be potentially a semi-tethered jailbreak, meaning you don't actually end up with a brick unless you exploit your device's boot ROM over USB. You could, in theory, still reboot it, but like I said, you wouldn't be able to use your jailbreak stuff unless you actually do, unless you plug it in and re-exploit the boot ROM and apply the jailbreak patches through exploiting the boot ROM. So if you guys have an iPhone 10 or lower, and you're fine with living with that, then of course, by all means, the choice to update is entirely yours because Checkrain is going to support a wide array of firmwares. In fact, it will even support iOS 13.2. How great is that? Older devices are going to have a permanent jailbreak for as long as they are supported by Apple. They're jailbroken for life. Nothing can change that. Apple cannot patch that. The only way they can, of course, is if they release new silicon, which obviously they've done since with the A12 and A13 CPUs. But one great 
thing about CheckRain is even though it doesn't support newer devices, it's going to provide a permanent jailbreak research environment for security researchers, meaning it doesn't matter which firmware they're on, they're going to be able to jailbreak and they're going to be able to perform security research and hopefully discover new kernel vulnerabilities and roll them into brand new jailbreaks. So guys, this is just an absolutely fantastic time in the world of jailbreaking. I cannot stress that enough. Now, in today's video, we've gone over what iOS 13.2 brings to the table. We've discussed jailbreaks a jailbreak that could support all devices based on a kernel vulnerability. We've also talked about CheckRain, whether or not you should update if you have a new device, if you have an old device. This is everything you guys need to know and the current status of things. For additional information on that, however, the current status of things, definitely check out yesterday's video, like I said, linked below, and also all of the previous videos. The entire CheckRain jailbreak series will be linked below too. So you guys have all the information you need to make the intelligent decision of whether to update on your own. The only thing that's left is to just stay tuned for a jailbreak. And of course, I'll keep you guys covered every single step of the way. Hope you guys like this coverage and until next time, this is ICU signing out.